Hey folks, it's Fook, and uh, I'm going to show you uh, very quickly how to do some time value calculations using the HP 12C. Um, I apologize in advance, you may hear some background noise. I have my air conditioner on. Anyways, I'm using an app um, that I downloaded from the Apple uh, App Store called Vicino 12E. Um, it's a clone of the HP 12C calculator, and it's significantly cheaper. Of course, you can buy the HP 12C, but uh, I don't see the need to pay like four or five times the cost, whatever it was. So it's, it's significantly less, uh, but it works exactly the same. The layout is the same. Um, also, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that shows you how to do this. It's just that I found the quality to be a little bit lacking, so I decided to make my own. So let's get right into it. By default, when you turn on the calculator, um, it's going to show you uh, two decimal places. That's kind of the default setting. But for financial calculations, I usually like to show four decimal places. And to do that, you just uh, hit the F key and then four. You can see that uh, the display changes to four decimal places. The other thing I like to do when I'm starting out is to uh, clear the registers of the calculator. It basically just clears the memory um, from previous calculation. And you do that by hitting G reg which is to the left of the enter key and now we can get right into it so uh, first example is uh, let's use a car loan um, let's say you're gonna finance twenty five thousand dollars and uh, it's gonna be over five years so that's sixty months at an annual rate of two percent car loans are usually low you can get them for zero point nine so just under one percent or one point nine all kinds of you know low rates these days but we'll use two percent so let's start entering our, our information in um, on the upper left you see a row of keys that's n i p v p m t and f v that's basically n the number of periods also called n per i is the interest rate p v is present value p m t is payment and then f v is future value um, you really only need three pieces of information in the time value uh, calculations and the calculator can figure out the other pieces if you have any of the three so let's start by entering in the loan amount which is twenty five thousand now we have to remember to hit the change sign key which is uh, to the right of the FV key and that makes it a negative and then we store that in our present value and the reason present value is a negative it's basically an outlay of money right you're paying money to buy the car and even though you're borrowing the money it's uh, money that's being paid so it doesn't matter if the source was the bank or you but it's it's basically money that's uh, being laid out uh, interest rate is two so we're gonna enter it as as, as two but when we enter it into um, the calculator I'm gonna hit G and then I you can see that right under the I in the blue it says 12 divide so basically what it's doing is taking your annual rate of 2% or whatever it may be and it divided by 12 to give you a monthly interest rate. Okay. Next is the number of years which is 5 and we're going to do the same thing except now we're going to hit G and then N. And what that does is it multiplies the number of years by 12 which gives you the total month, number of months, 60 in this case. So uh, once you have those three pieces of information in uh, that's really all you need. You can then hit the payment key, PMT, and it tells you that the payment on this loan is $438.19 a month for 60 months. Okay, pretty easy. If you um, want to play around and you say, well, you know, what if I, I only finance $24,000 because I'm going to put $1,000 down or increase my down payment by $1,000, uh, how would that affect the payments? So then you can put in 24,000. Again, remember to change the sign to negative. Hit the PV key. The interest rate didn't change. The number of years didn't change. So now you can just hit payment and it'll tell you what the new payment is. And it's 420 67 cents. So uh, less than uh, when you finance at 25,000. Makes sense, right? You can also see what happens if your interest rate changes. So let's say you got a better deal from a credit union and it's not 2%, but it's one. So then you can just hit the one, G and I, and then hit the payment key and you see the effect 
of a lower interest rate on that payment. Okay. Um, you can also do the reverse where you can say, hey, you know what? I can't afford $410 payment. I can only afford $350 a month payment. So what you can do is you can say 350 hit the payment key. So now you have uh, changed one of the values in the time series calculation. And you're basically saying, I want my payment to be 350. My interest rate is going to be 1% and the uh, number of years is five years or 60 months. And what does that mean in terms of the present value that I would have to uh, put out to get a payment of 350 a month? And to, to get the answer, you just hit the PV key. Okay. And no surprise, to get a lower payment, you have to finance less. So it was less than the 25,000 we started or even the lower uh, 24,000 that we uh, we tried so that makes sense and this basically means that if you want a lower payment um, you would have to come up with uh, a bigger down payment so that you're financing less uh, of course the other thing you can do is you can stretch out the number of months that you're gonna pay it back right so let's say you really need to finance 25,000 okay so you can put in 25,000 change the sign store it in present value your payment is 350. We haven't changed that. Your interest rate is, uh, uh, I think we changed it to one. Um, so now you can hit the end key and it'll tell you that you need to finance this thing for 74 months, right? Instead of 60. So it's like six years and two months. But that's basically how you would do um, a car loan. Uh, a mortgage would be almost identical except the values are much bigger so we'll run through one really quick and then uh, you can ex you can try several on your own okay. so we'll start by hitting F reg to clear the register we don't want it to remember any of the values that we've entered so let's say that you're buying a house I live in San Diego so houses here are very expensive so let's say the house you're buying is seven hundred thousand dollars okay so uh, on $700,000, if you're going to put 20% down, that is $140,000 down, which means that you would have to finance $560,000, okay? So let's start by putting in the loan amount, $560,000. Again, we change the sign. We store it in the present value. And uh, let's say that we are doing a fixed 30-year loan, okay? And uh, the rate's going to be four and a quarter percent. So then we put in 4.25, hit the G key, store it in the interest rate. Okay. And it's 30 years, so we hit 30. G, N. So it automatically converts it to month, 360 months. And now you can hit the payment key. And it tells you basically that on that $560,000 loan at 4.5% fixed for 30 years, your payment per month is going to be $2,754 and, and change. Okay. You can play around with the interest rate and uh, see what happens You know, if uh, maybe you pay a point and got it down to 4% uh, flat instead of 4 and a quarter. So you can put 4 G I. And now let's see if our payment, which was 2784, I think, what that ends up to be. And no surprise, it's less. So you can use the same principle that we did with the car loan to figure out different scenarios for mortgages. So maybe you're going to do a 15 year loan instead of a 30 year. Um, maybe you're going to put more money down. Um, you get the idea. Last example I'm going to do is. Uh, Figuring out what your retirement would be if you have a balance, you know, of whatever today. Okay. So let's say that, uh, so we're going to start again by clearing everything. Let's say that you're a youngish person. Um, you're 30 years old. You've worked for a couple years now and you've managed to save up some money. And uh, we're just going to say that, uh, you know, you had a really good job. You went to school and had a really good job and make decent money and you've managed to save in the six years that you've worked uh, $100,000 by age 30, okay? And your plan is to retire at 65.
course, these days, full retirement age is like 67 or whatever. But for this calculation, we're going to do 65, just so you can get the idea. So to start, you've saved up, saved up $100,000. Okay, change signs to negative. Put that in the present value. And as always, because you've saved $100,000, it basically means that you're taking $100,000 from your pocket and putting it into a retirement account, right? That's why it's negative. It's not in your pocket anymore. Um, you're going to let that sit for 35 years because you're 30 and you want to retire at age 65. So then we put 35 G N and it figures out how many months that is. And uh, let's be conservative and uh, say that uh, your interest rate over 35 years averages about 7%. Okay, That's reasonable because the long-term return for the S&P 500 is something around 10%, 9.8 whatever. right? And if you're accounting for in inflation of about 3% a year, using 7 is a good approximation. So we'll hit 7. And then uh, G I to get the monthly rate. So now you have your current balance, 35 years at 7%. You can hit the F V key for future value to tell you how much you would have at age 65 if you started with $100,000. And it's $1.15 million, basically. Okay. So now you may be saying, well, that's great, but uh, I'm not going to stop saving at age 30. What if I were to uh, uh, save, you know, $500 a month, okay, towards my retirement. So I'm starting with $100,000, but I'm going to put in $500,000, $500 a month, so 6000 a year, towards my uh, savings. What would that do to the future value? You can do that too. So to do that, you put in your monthly payment, which is 500 and again, remember this is an outlay, so it's going out of your pocket into the retirement account. So change sign to negative, store it in the payment, and now hit the future value key. And you can see that if you were able to save an additional $500 a month over the next 35 years, and you started with $100,000, your balance would increase from $1.15 million to 2.05 million. Not bad, right? So hopefully with uh, these examples, it gives you some uh, fundamentals to work with to do a bunch of time value uh, calculations on the HP 12C. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave in the comments below and I will get to it. Thanks. See you guys.